Hello everyone and welcome to Archon Welding. My name's Calvin and I want you to do me a favor for the next 25 minutes. Sit back, relax and enjoy this video. So the pipe I'm working on now is a standard weight pipe. It's uh, seamless, which means it's thicker than my standard pipe I usually weld, which is normally a Shed 20. This is almost like a, a Shed 40 pipe, but it's classed as standard weight. I'm using a Fronius TPS 400i and I'm going to be rooting it at around 145 amps with 1mm solid core wire and I'm going to be using a M21 gas mixture setting on the Fronius machine and I believe that is a M24 gas mixture um, on the Universal Argon. A lot of people ask me what do I mean by copper free wire so as you can see the wire is coated in a silver coating that's for lubrication it allows the wire to slide past each other without binding now regulations in, in Europe and the UK and stuff states that the copper free coating is more better for your health but don't ask me what this one's coated in I have no clue now I'm starting this pipe off the way I start off many of my pipes and that's by tacking on a rotating handle onto the back of the elbow this allows me to flip the pipe 90 degrees to each other quick and easy and for the most part a lot of my pipes are just one flange one butt on each side so saves me time because it's a diy turning handle i can never quite find the center on the fittings so i use my v-stand to lift up the elbow to bring it level and it also acts as a support for me to bring my next pipe in I use a scrap piece of TIG filler rod, 3mm thick, as my um, gap spacer. And then with my tacks, because it's a class 2 job, I'm going over my tacks. So I, um, I kind of burst them in. This way here it doesn't penetrate too much, as well as it gives me good penetrating tacks. So I don't have to um, weld quarters. I will, for this weld here, weld it in quarters, just so you lot don't crucify me too much. Like I said, it's a class two job, so the standards it has to be welded to is nowhere near how um, strict it would be in certain other places. So what I'm doing is plenty fine. It's a, a low pressure system, probably running operating pressure around six bar maybe. So nothing too crazy. Cold water goes through this, maybe um, medium temp water. So this is perfectly fine for, for this application. Obviously depends on where you are, what you need to do determines the, the quality and, and the techniques that you do to weld the pipe. So I've done the four tacks and now I'm just feathering my start stops. That's why I like good penetrating tacks because it allows me to feather away a lot of the weld so my tie-ins come out beautifully. Now moving on to the root. I didn't really capture um, good arc shots of the root. It's really difficult just for this pipe here. Initially, I'm trying to weld the inside of the pipe from the outside. That's basically the concept of the root. So it's a smaller arc, more controlled, lower temperature, which allows you to fuse the two surfaces of the metal together. Soon, hopefully I should have a video out showing my procedure for making a weld test piece the other day I, i've done a practice piece to show my friend how to um, to do it and i think that was one of my best welds i've ever done so i'm going to work on a video demonstrating uh, my techniques that i do for me to pass my class one x-ray job The next thing I'll do once I've rooted all the pipe is use my grinder, clean down the root and um, try to get a nice clean finish. Here you can see certain spots that aren't completely bare metal, it's okay, it's not a welding test piece but if it was I would have cleared them completely away, I would have grinded it away to nothing. So I'm running a hot pass, I can't remember the amp, something maybe along the lines of 270 amps, something like that, just moving fast. I use my wire wheel, clean up the hot pass, ready for the final cap which I believe was around the 250 amps 260 70 amps mark I can't remember it's been so long since I made this pipe 
one of the reasons that I love my Thronius machine so much is this pulse setting. It manipulates the molten pull in such a way that it always gives you such a beautiful finish. It's got a lot of technology behind it to help you to make a nice weld. I use my linisher to grind down my start stop, makes it look a lot neater once it's painted and for the sake of this video I use the wire wheel to clean up the weld. I don't necessarily do that, there's, there's no point. Once the pipe's done it goes out to the QA guys and they do what they do, paint it and send it out. But for the sake of the video, yeah I thought I'd clean it up. And here's a perfect example of what I mean by being able to flip the pipe and slide it straight back in now I can move on to my next piece so I believe I've got another sliver of pipe that goes um, on this elbow and then a 45 on the other end of it the better I initially put the handle onto the back of the elbow the less work there is at this point here sometimes I can put the handle on so bad that when I use the V-stand to get it level I have to pick my table up to level the elbow off because it's put on so out of whack but lucky for me this handles on pretty square so I can tack my second piece on initial tacks at 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock and then I'm going to flip the pipe 90 degrees and then level off this piece of pipe to the rest of the pipe sometimes in these videos all I feel like I'm saying is level and pipe and pipe and level over and over again it drives me crazy but the show must go on so I've leveled off my pipe to the other piece of pipe and I'm going to tack it and then I can move on to fit in my 45. I'm using a grinder here just because the gap's a little bit small. I want to get some good tacks on it so I can weld over these tacks and just feather them down to nothing so I can get a nice tie in. So I'm, I'm doing it to both sides. The gap being small is okay. I can use my um, big grinder, open up that gap no problem when I'm welding it. But for now, I want to make sure the tacks are strong enough that they won't snap off once I feather them down. Worst thing you can do is set your pipe up, feather your tacks down and they snap off and then everything drops on the floor and you have to reset everything up. Now I can move on to fit my 22.5 degree and for me to get the 22.5 degree fit in, I just chopped down a 45. And I had the 45 on the table and I had two squares on either side of it, measured the overall length, divided it by two, marked it in the centre and then took it to the saw and then it got chopped in half. The fitting isn't perfect but for what I'm doing, more than enough. So I just make sure the face of it is level. You can check the top of the fitting to make sure it's running flat but it's a bit, it's a bit of a tricky one. Far too often these, these fittings are all over the place so you have to use your best judgment as to what you're going to use what gaps you're going to split and um, just the overall way to, to fit them otherwise you'll just go crazy you can't get these perfect so with that being said again I um, split the difference both sides and I put four tacks on it because it's a 22 and a half degree fitting I don't have an easy way of checking to make sure it's 22 and a half degrees if it was a 45 then I could have flipped it put my 45 degree um, triple bubble level on it and it would have been easy but because it's 22 and a half I would have had to grab out my digital level and it would have been a bit of a, a headache so I am going to rely on making sure I get the correct measurement and making sure the 22 and a half degree is actually 22 and a half degrees by checking the measurement on this elbow that I'm installing now I am calling upon my years of experience, I am installing the elbow an awkward way but all I need to do is get one tack on it and then that's like someone else holding it and then I can just then proceed from there. It's not easy, I wouldn't recommend doing it this way for, for many people but I've been doing it for so long I will struggle to get that one tack and once that one tack's there then I can move on. So right now struggling to hold it up checking the pipe alignment making sure everything's lined up and ready once I flip my mask down 
for the most part, I can't see my um, level on top of the elbow anymore. The bubble is just so close to my face, I can't look down that much. So I have to just kind of gamble it. Putting a nice solid tack on it, making sure it's not going to fall on me. Check the level, all good. Now I can move on to tacking the bottom of my um, elbow. So the way I make these videos, I film it, I um, edit it together with the visuals and then I, I narrate over it now like what I'm doing and I'm surprised that I didn't check the measurement of the elbow a little bit more like I said a, a few seconds ago I'm gonna check the 22 is is in the correct measurement by using the elbow to get the right height I'm surprised I didn't check that but I guess I must have knew what I was doing then so another difficult part to fit the 45 on a normal day I would always fit my 45s horizontally so the set would be running um, on a horizontal plane but because this pipe is so unique I have to do a positional at the end before starting this job I was running through my head how I'm gonna make this which way will make it be the easiest so I can do the most rolled joint and there was no real way of doing this last 45 without setting the whole pipe up and then doing the positional at the end I try to avoid positionals they take a lot longer to do I get paid for every single one of these butt welds you see I get a certain amount of money to do them so it's in my best interest to do as many of them as fast as possible positionals they take about one and a half times two times as long to do as a standard butt weld so yeah I didn't I didn't really want to do this ideally but sometimes it, it, it can't be avoided and this was one of them situations so I put two little baby tacks on it it was such an uh, awkward uncomfortable position to do so them little tacks would hold it and then allow me to level it off to put my final solid tacks on All what's left is to counterbalance the pipe and then do all of the roll joints as fast as I can. One of the main reasons you see me using the 9 inch grinder is because I like to feather my tacks away to nothing. So the reason why I take a lot of time and attention to put good tacks in is I use the tacks to um, stand in for my route. So by feathering the starts and stops and feathering down the whole tack making it strong enough to hold the, the the weight of the pipe but barely allows me to weld straight over it fuse all of the tack together and it comes out like a root this saves me time i wouldn't do this on a weld test i only do it on these class two jobs where it's okay Moving on to welding the 22 and a half degree fitting, I find doing two smaller beads right next to each other gives you a more consistent, nicer weld. When I try to do a one bead cap, what tends to happen is it just gets so hot and the welds, they droop a little bit. So it's easier to just take the time and do two caps and it comes out nicely. Now it's time to hang the flange. There's two techniques that I use to check the measurement of the flange, how far it has to stick out so I can get my um, within three mil tolerance of center measurement to the face of the flange. So the first technique, you see me stick the level out and then um, use that as like a straight edge to check how far it is from the edge of the pipe to my level and then I plus half the diameter of the pipe. In this case here is 105 mil because it's eight inch pipe. So yeah, half of that is 105 mil. So I plus their measurements together and then minus it from the drawing, which gives me, I think it says 15 or 18 mil. The flange has to stick out for me to get the right measurement. Now that's my tried and true tested way. But if your cut isn't straight, you're not gonna get the right measurement. So 
it comes with a pinch of salt that technique another way again if your if your chop isn't quite straight it, it can throw it off and that's just simply measuring from the from your cut of the pipe to the center of your weld plus on what the center diameter is sorry plus on what the center of the the elbow is in this case here is 305 mil to the center so that will be um, them two measurements plus together minus again from the overall and then it will give you how far it has to stick out both ways do work but it just depends on what type of pipe that you're doing something simple I'll check one way um, I'm not really too fast but when it's a complicated piece of pipe that's hard to flip 90 degrees each time just so you can check the, the correct measurement once you tack it together I would use the two techniques and then hopefully whatever the measurements are hopefully they're, they're the same if they're not then I'll just split the difference and pray and hope that it comes out fine if not you have to chop your tacks move the flange back or forwards or whatever but it's, it is a nightmare usually and by the way don't have a heart attack I'm not hitting the face of the flange I'm hitting the edges of the flanges where the bolt holes will go through So the pipe is all tacked up, now I'm moving on to the positional. So if, you can, if you've been following the video, you can kind of see there isn't really an easy way of doing this type of fit up without leaving this to be a positional at the end. And I, I probably could roll this, but it's just so much weight, so much work and effort to, to roll this one butt that a positional's fine. I've got a video on my channel of me doing a, a positional tutorial almost. I'm going to link that in the description and then you can find out properly what I'm doing. I'm going to wrap this video up now and leave you lot with the last few minutes just being able to hear the natural noises of the workshop. But with that being said, if you lot think I've deserved to subscribe from you, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. I, I upload all over the place now. I'm not even going to pretend I've got a schedule. So yeah, if you hit the bell notification, you'll get notified every time I drop a video. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.